Hello, hello everybody. I hope you're doing really well. I just wanted to first wish you a Merry Christmas, although it's probably a little bit late now, a week after Christmas, but Merry Christmas anyway, if you celebrate Christmas that is. And also, uh, Happy New Year. Um, I can't believe that we've gone through a whole year since I did my, my favorite lists. And this year for me has been a particularly good one photographically. Uh, I managed to go to quite a few new areas and I want to just take this moment to thank all of you for supporting this channel. Um, my, my original intent when starting this channel was to, uh, well basically is just to get people to sign up for my photography workshops. Uh, as some of you may or may not know, uh, in 2014, I, uh, I lost my job at uh, a magazine that I worked for for about 20 years. It was a gardening magazine and I was the primary photographer there. And uh, since that time, I, I, I have to admit, it's been a little bit of a struggle. Uh, when I first started doing photography workshops, I was really apprehensive because as most of you know, there's just so many workshops out there and getting your name out there for uh, any kind of nature photography workshops is, is pretty difficult in these times. Uh, my first year was a flop. I uh, lost my shirt on a lot of my uh, workshops. Uh, I, I advertised in all kinds of different places and I just couldn't get the clients. So I decided to start up uh, this YouTube channel and it's been an awesome uh, success for me. But also, not only that, uh, I can't believe the, the support and the encouragement that I've got from my audience, from, from you guys. So thank you ever so much for that. You know, when it comes to talking in front of a camera, it's taken me a little while to kind of open up and, and get used to that idea. Um, uh, you know, most of the things that I do or say on camera, well, pretty much all of them all come off the top of my head. So Tom's so as, as like now, sometimes I have a, a little bit of a hard time articulating that and, uh, and getting my sentences right. Uh, but anyway, thank you ever so much. I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, I mean, it works both ways. As long as I'm supplying half decent content, you guys will enjoy it. And uh, the feedback for me uh, really encourages me to get motivated and go out and, and do these videos and take more images. So thanks ever so much for that. Right, without further delay, I will show you my top 10 favorite images of 2018. Uh, now I should say, because they're my favorites, doesn't necessarily always mean that they're my best images. And kind of like last year, most of my favorite images have been taken in the last part of the year. I don't know if it's it takes me a while to, to build up or the summers generally aren't good for me. Uh, this year, as you know, uh, we had a lot of wildfires in British Columbia. So the light was not good at all. And I think that's going to be an ongoing issue from year to year. As the summers get hotter and drier, we have more and more fires. Uh, a lot of the forest, a lot of the trees are dying. And of course, as they die, then it's just fuel for more fires. So uh, summers aren't great. Spring is a, a really good time, but fall for me generally is the best time for photography. And that's when I seem to have most of my successes. So I'll start at the beginning of the year and we'll work our way up. All right. Right, and the first photograph to reach my list of favorites in 2018 is this panoramic uh, photograph of old growth forest in an area called Macmillan Provincial Park, or better known as Cathedral Grove. Now I took this back in March, and uh, Cathedral Grove is not that far from where I live. It's about a 20 minute drive from Parksville, and I've been here lots of times to take photographs but very rarely do I come home with anything that I really like. Like most forest photography, 
I find it extremely difficult to come up with a composition, but I was really happy with this because it was one of those situations where I had more or less envisioned what I wanted before I even took the photograph. So I looked for a scene that uh, I, I kind of envisioned, and then when it came to processing the image, I knew exactly what I wanted and where I wanted to direct the viewer's eye. So I made a video uh, of me taking the image and then I made another one of the processing. So I'm extremely proud of this photograph. It's not in your face wow, it, uh, it's a little bit more subdued, but that seems to be my style of photography in the last few years. I'm not going for the wow factor, I'm going for the more long lasting, uh, viewership if you if you want to call it that uh, type of image where you can look at an image for quite a long time uh, it's not to say that i, I don't enjoy uh, dramatic light uh, early morning late evening light but personally i find those images don't have a lasting effect on me you kind of look at them you go wow what a brilliant photograph and then you kind of move on with these types of images there's so many details in there that i can look at them for a very long time and that's more or less the images that i go for so I was extremely happy with this photograph and uh, I made a large print of it and I'm happy with the print as well. So Cathedral Grove is number one on my list. Number two on my list is another old growth forest image and this time we're in Chilliwack Valley. Now Chilliwack Valley is about a two hour drive from the city of Vancouver in British Columbia and to get to this location you actually have to have a boat. So a big thanks goes out to uh, my friend Jeremy Jackson for uh, taking me this, to this location because I'd never been here before and I just found it to be just a, a wonderful spot. Uh, now, I'm not sure if I captured it in this single image, but the reason why I've put it in as one of my, my favorites is because it really conjures up some great memories of this location. I think there's a ton of potential in this spot. Whether I captured it or not, I'm not sure. I particularly loved this area here where there was a few uh, western red cedars and some alder and some Douglas fir growing around this, uh, this creek here. So it was a beautiful spot. I really do like this photograph, uh, but I think I can do better. So Jeremy, if you're listening, and I know he probably is, uh, we need to go back. <laughs> but uh, the whole area, uh, I mean, it, it, it was just a beautiful little spot and uh, I'm really looking forward to going back and, and giving a, another go. Like all forest photography, like the previous image, uh, I find forests hard to photograph. So I definitely need to go back to areas three or four times, especially forests, before I get the photographs that I, I really want. Okay, my next two photographs come from a remarkable area on North Vancouver Island. Now this area is called San Joseph Bay and it's about a five or six hour drive from Parksville, which is where I live, mid-island. Uh, and at the end of the drive, there's a, a little short hike. It's about two kilometers long to these fantastic beaches uh, with remarkable sand, uh, something like you might expect to find in uh, the South Pacific and surrounding these beaches is some old growth forest and also at one end of the one of the beaches there's these really great uh, rock formations with uh, little bonsai trees growing on the top of them. Now as fantastic as 
this spot is, it's very hard to photograph. Uh, and I've tried to photograph these sea stacks in the past, but the problem with them is, is that they really blend in with the background. It doesn't really matter which direction you try to photograph them, they always blend in with the trees behind them. So I was really lucky on my last uh, trip to the area because even though we were having hot sunny weather, there was coastal fog all up and down the west coast of Vancouver Island. So the fog really adds a lot of mood to the photographs and it also separates those pinnacles and those bonsai trees from the otherwise uh, confusing and busy background. So I was really happy with this pano image that I took here. I know at the same time, uh, my friend Gavin Hardcastle, he went up to this area, but they had bright blue skies. They didn't have fog. So his solution to photographing these pinnacles was to photograph them at night. And uh, that was a great way to approach uh, this subject as well. My second photograph, uh, I, I really love this image because you really have to do a double take. Uh, if you just look at this image quickly, it looks almost like a pencil or a charcoal drawing. But when you look at it closely, you, you realize that it's actually sand patterns with uh, a sand dollar. It might be a little bit contrived because the sand dollar I actually placed in the frame. But what I really like about this photograph is that I came up with the idea while I was standing there with this sand dollar in my hand trying to figure out what I could do with it and how I could integrate it into the, the scene that was on the sand here. And I thought, oh, why not just place it in the scene because it almost looks like uh, trees or an old growth forest and then put the sand dollar in the frame to make it look like either the sun or the moon rising above these trees. So it's kind of an abstract, I really like this type of stuff. It's not often that I find scenes like this, uh, but I really do like close-up photography uh, and I, sh I should really do more of it. So I was really happy with this scene overall. Uh, it's more about observation and looking for something a little bit out of the norm than photographing the obvious uh, of what's in front of you. My fifth pick is an area that I've visited many, many times, and that is the Juan de Fuca Trail, not far from Botanical Beach. There's a certain section in between Botanical Bay and Botanical Beach where all of these uh, red cedars are all kind of twisted around the trail. I've always loved this section of the trail, but I've always had a bit of a difficult time photographing it. I guess what I enjoy about this image the most is the uh, implied movement of the limbs throughout the scene. They draw your eye all the way to the center there where there's uh, a little bit of uh, haze and, and brightness. And that was done intentionally. Okay, now for this image, I had to do quite a bit of work on it, uh, somewhat like my very first pick at Cathedral Grove, in that I did quite a bit of dodging and burning to draw the viewer's attention to certain areas of the frame. I also had to do some uh, focus stacking because the roots in the foreground are so close to the, the front of the lens that it was just impossible to get everything in sharp focus, uh, even stop down to f16 or f22. But overall, I, I, I really enjoy this photograph. I love that sweeping line of the limb in the foreground and then the uh, the trees that kind of mimic that uh, that kind of contorted view of this, this tunnel view down this trail here. As a side note, I have a number of workshops in this area and in 2019, I'll be running three in the Port Renfrew area. So I'll leave a link below if you're interested and uh, it'll have all the information that you need on my website.
Okay, I just realized that this video is getting really long. <laughs> so, uh, so what I'm going to do is split it into two and uh, I'll post the second half of the video tomorrow so you don't have to wait a whole week for the second half. Now, my sixth pick for uh, this half of the video is an image that I took in Yoho National Park. Now, there is a common theme throughout this whole series of images, and that is most of these locations are ones that I've uh, repeatedly uh, visited over and over. And I, I strongly believe that, uh, you know, if you, if you really wanna work at your photography, is to continually find those areas that are relatively easy to get to or, or easy access and just keep going back uh, you know, time and time again. And eventually you'll, you'll find images in those locations that are, are satisfying. And, and of course, you can always improve on your photography or always improve on certain compositions. For this image here, this is a prime example. I've been to this location many times and I'll probably continue going to this location. It's a very small area. And I keep going back to the to the same composition, but I, I keep tweaking it and moving, you know, a foot here, a foot there. And I always seem to come up with something a little bit different than what I've come up with before. The first time I photographed in this area, I was using a four by five and uh, I came away with a, an image that I, I really like and I still like it to this day. But on this trip, this past summer, I decided to try something just a little bit different, include a little bit more, move over to the left a little bit, uh, use a slightly wider angle lens. And uh, even though it's the same area and it has the same elements, to it it's a totally different photograph and i and i really like this photograph i i like all the interesting curves and the tonality i love that blue color so it's a for me it's a really interesting photograph to look at and i could hang this on my wall and and look at it for a very long time and again it's a, a, a an intimate detail of the larger scene and that seems to be the types of uh, images that i'm really interested in is the, the smaller scenes within the grand landscape. All right, everybody, I'm gonna leave it there for now. Uh, I do have corresponding videos that go with each of the photographs. So if you haven't seen those on my channel, I'll leave a link to them uh, below in the description if you wanna have a look. And if you do enjoy them, be sure to uh, you know leave a comment or a thumbs up, it'd be much appreciated. All right, everybody, thanks for so much, and uh, I'll continue with this uh, tomorrow. Okay, bye for now.